Hello everyone and welcome back to The Beatles Forever. I've been doing videos on what George Martin had to say about being in on the Sgt. Pepper's album. As I said in a previous video, it isn't necessary to start at the first video because each video just states what happened in the studio when they were making the album. So it's fun to see how they decided to record the songs and the processes they had to go through and the teamwork that was needed and how they all worked as a team to put out the best songs they could produce. So let's continue and see what happens next. For the benefit of Mr. Kite, George Martin said that John Lennon always wrote songs that happened to him directly. I like that because we get to see just what John Lennon was thinking and feeling in a song. John Lennon was in an antique shop while the Beatles were shooting a promotional film in Knoll Park. It was in the antique shop when John came across an old Victorian poster. It advertised a circus that actually took place in 1843. John bought it and displayed it at the entrance of his home in Weybridge. All the names on the poster are in the song, and John said to George Martin, The acrobats and tights, the smell of animals, the merry-go-rounds, I want to smell the sawdust, George. So John began by singing the song to George on his acoustic guitar. They then discussed what they wanted to do with the song. John came up with the idea that he wanted it to sound like the song that was in the children's show called The Magic Roundabout. It had a 2D sound, as George put it. <laughs> so George Martin said that John loved watching children's television shows. And ironically, George Martin had thought of a childlike sound, too. He was thinking the organ in the Disney Snow White movie. George started to look for steam organs for the calliope sound. George found out that the fairground organs were like pianolas, and music was made by punching out cards. John was eager to find one, even though it would take a long time to punch a card for the song and it would be a huge to put in the studio. So George came up with a better idea. He said he would use an existing recording. Then George Martin had a problem finding the right recording. They were mainly military marches. Then George said to John, how about we create a special backing track with organs and mouth organs, a pumping sound, and they used a Hammond organ, and Maul Evans, their road manager, played a big bass harmonica. Things were sounding good, but they knew something was wrong. They figured out it was a calliope. So George went back to the recorded marches and transferred them to one tape. And then George came up with an idea of cutting up the tape into sections 15 inches long. He got Jeff the engineer to do it. And after the pieces were cut up and on the floor, he told Jeff to throw the pieces in the air. And he told him to piece them back together and don't look at what you're doing. So when they listened, there was a chaotic sound that came out of it. And it sounded like a steam organ. George said listening to the song was like a period piece, just like a furniture of a given period. It had its own charm. He said you wouldn't want to hear Beatles uh, doing Mr. Kite on a 48-track machine. It wouldn't have had the same charm. Next, we have Lovely Rita. George thought that this song was going to be easy, like fixing a hole. It was coming together pretty fast. Then they waited a few weeks to pick up the song again. The song got finished, but the song just died out. The Beatles were having fun messing with the tape echo, and then they did the cha-chas and other strange noises. Paul said about the song, I was hopping about on the piano playing in Liverpool when somebody told me that they call parking meter women meter maids in America, and I thought that was great. So it got to read a meter maid, and I was thinking vaguely that it should be a hate song, and you wouldn't be liking her, but then I thought it would be better to love her and if she was a very freaky too, like a military man with a bag on her shoulder, a foot stomper, but nice. Now we have Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Ringo said that the one thing he remembered from the Sgt. Pepper sessions was that he learned how to play chess. George said that Ringo would be listening to any song in progress and wasn't afraid to voice his criticism. He would look at John and say, John, that's crap. And John would look over his glasses and murmur, oh, really? And then he would change it. And Paul also took notice of what Ringo said, because Ringo had a good ear. So at the beginning of this song, they used a Larry organ. George Martin said, John composed the song on the hoof. He had the intro, and when he went into the studio, but not the melody, then he came up with Picture Yourself and a Boat on the River. So Paul said he had gone to John's house, and John showed Paul the picture that Julian had drawn at school with the words Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds on top of it. Paul told John it would be a great title for a song, and John agreed. They went upstairs to John's music room, and John started with Picture Yourself, and then they discussed Lewis Carroll and Alice books. 
George Harrison not only came up with good songs for the Beatles, he did great guitar work as well, and he was great at coming up with sounds. And then George Martin said that John was like Dolly, Dylan Thomas, and Lewis Carroll. The next song, Getting Better All the Time. Hunter Davies, who was writing the biography of uh, Paul McCartney, was with Paul and his dog Martha, the sheepdog, and they were walking on Primrose Hill, and Paul said, it's getting better, meaning that the weather was getting better because spring was in the air. And that led Paul to remember the Beatles' temporary drummer, Jimmy Nickel, and he would always say, oh, it's getting better all the time, when he was asked how things were going with him. So everyone was supposed to be at the studio at 7 p.m., and Ringo strolled in at about 11 p.m. and ordered a fish and chips, and then the others turned up later, and they didn't get started until after 1 a.m. when John arrived, and then they spent two nights laying down the basic rhythm track. One night, John wasn't feeling very well, so George Martin said, let's go to the roof for a bit of fresh air, and they were on the edge of the roof, and George was holding on to John, who was swaying. All of a sudden, Paul and George burst out through the door, and George said that everyone knew John was on LSD, except that he didn't know. <laughs> so John said he meant to take an amphetamine tablet, but got the LSD one instead. And that night, John didn't want to go back to Weybridge, so Paul took him home with him. And it was there that Paul took his first LSD tablet so he could get with John and be with him in his fear and misery. But I don't know if that was such a great idea. <laughs> but then one day, uh, George Martin said he was feeling down, and John put a capsule in his hand and said, This will do you wonders. George kept it and then showed it to his doctor, and the doctor said, My God, where did you get that? Don't you dare take it. In fact, give it to me now. So John had always been a counterbalance to Paul's sugar sweetness in song. George Martin said that Paul... George and Ringo were in the studio, and Paul was singing the song, uh, It's Getting Better, on an upright piano so that everyone could learn it. And he started to sing the song again, saying, I've got to admit it's getting better, a little better all the time. And then John strode through the doors at the other end of the studio, never hearing the song. He counteracted in perfect music and lyric with It Couldn't Get Much Worse. That gave you the song, that gave the song the edge it needed. Within You, Without You. So this was George Harrison's song, and he came up with it when he was with Klaus Vrooman, and they were having a discussion on the meaning of life. And this was the first song that he devoted a whole track to the ending and sounding song. It was a solo effort. George Martin said that George played him the song on an acoustic guitar, and it sounded sad, but George Martin was intrigued. He brought in some Indian musicians to lay down the rhythm track. George Harrison loved working with them, and some of the rhythms could be difficult, but George got it. So George Martin had the job of getting the Western strings to go along with the Indian counterparts. George Martin looked forward to the clash of the cultures of the studio. It turned into a marathon lasting 11 hours. The rest of the Beatles were there, but they were only there for the fun of it. The other Beatles liked the song, though they were a bit bemused by it, according to George Martin. And they said George always came up with the unexpected. George Martin said about George Harrison that George could always spot a phony. He was the practical one. He could mend an amplifier and change a fuse. He was a generous person, too. If you were a friend of his and needed help, he'd give you his last penny. And he would defend you to the last. So then next song is She's Leaving Home. This song came to Paul just as it did with It's Getting Better. He was walking Martha the Sheepdog on Primrose Hill. George said it wasn't a Beatles song, it was a McCartney song. There were some hurt feelings from George Martin when Paul hired an arranger for the song when George said he couldn't get the song, get to the song right away. Paul didn't realize that it hurt George, and he said to him, I couldn't understand why it was so important to you. It was in my mind, and I just wanted to get it out. It, that's all. It was Paul being Paul. So George Martin thought the song was one of Paul's greatest. George Martin wrote at the end of the chapter that long after John died, Yoko said to him, I wish he would work with John on his last album. It would have been so much better. And George Martin thought that Double Fantasy was good as it was. And then George Martin responded, well, you didn't ask me. <laughs> but he said he was surprised and rather touched that she really believed it. With a little help from my friends, Paul and John wrote this song for Ringo. The second line was supposed to have been, would you stand up and throw tomatoes at me? He remembered the time the fans were throwing jelly babies at them, and he didn't want something like that to happen again. So they changed the line, would you stand up and walk out on me?
Ringo hit the high note at the end of the song and gave a great performance. George was the one who chose which songs would appear and which on which side of the album. George always felt that Psy One had to be strong. Sgt. Pepper's beginning had the start to the album and introduces Billy Shears, so with a little help from my friends had to be next. Lucy in the Sky was a great song, so it had to be on side one. And George also felt that you should go out strong on a side, so that's why being for the benefit of Mr. Kite ended side one. And some of the weaker songs were squeezed in between Lucy and for the benefit of Mr. Kite. Uh, since she's leaving home was a bit downbeat, it had to be after getting better and fixing a hole, which were more upbeat. And George didn't know where to put Within You Without You. It was a long song and so different. So George Martin decided to have it start on side two. With the laughing at the end of the song, it led the way for the jokey tune, When I'm 64. George Martin didn't really like Rita Medium Raid, so he placed the song in the middle for padding. And next he placed Good Morning, Good Morning. It was a happy accident. The Chick Squawk led the way for the reprise of the guitar tuning up for Sgt. Pepper. The album ends with A Day in the Life. Nothing George Martin said could come after that 42-second chord. The album was a huge success. And then George ended the book with a line that showed just how much the Beatles meant to him. They were really fab in my life. I loved them all. The book, with a little help from my friends, was so great. It felt like the reader was standing beside George as he helped make their album a reality. We got to see their thought processes, their enthusiasm creating songs in the studio, and the personalities of the Beatles themselves. So I hope everybody enjoyed the video, and if you did, if you could give it a thumbs up, it would be greatly appreciated. And click on the notification bell to get alerted when a new video has been released. I hope everybody's been having a good day. Tune in again soon for another episode of The Beatles Forever. Thank you. Bye.